commission, which was held a few years later, did uh, uh, the government amend uh, the Commission of Inquiry Act to give them contempt powers. In 1984-85 or 86, when these controversies erupted, the Commission of Inquiry had no such power. And yet, the few who were defying that commission's uh, order and uh, doing this kind of reporting, at that stage fell in line. All kind of reporting stopped completely. They obeyed uh, this uh, illegal order of uh, Ranganath Mishra as though he had such a power, as though he was empowered to take action against uh, journalists. So again, they prostrated before the commission. They abdicated their duty to report what kind of farce was being uh, perpetrated before the commission. And uh, sure enough, this uh, silence on the part of the media gave him uh, that scope to perpetrate a, a whitewash. Uh, in, uh, towards the end of 1986, he submitted his report. And on February 23rd, uh, 1987, I remember this date even after all these years because I was absolutely astounded by the brazen manner in which this report was tabled in parliament uh, by the Rajiv Gandhi government. Mm -hmm and um, uh, no debate was allowed whatsoever in parliament on this report. A debate in which issues of this nature, you know, the fact that the, uh, all the proceedings were held in camera and uh, the group uh, that uh, were appeared for uh, uh, victims called Citizens Justice Committee found the uh, proceedings so farcical that Halfway through the inquiry, they boycotted it. They withdrew from it. It was that bad. And it was not a group uh, that was full of some, you know, hotheads from civil society. It was headed by a former Chief Justice of India, S.M. Sikri. And it comprised uh, senior advocates like, say, uh, Justice V.M. Tarkunde, a very eminent civil liberties advocate, and uh, Soli Sorabji. All these people were members of that CJC. And they came to this considered view that this commission could not be trusted. Yet, there was no reportage of all this contemporaneously. And parliament at that stage was not allowed to uh, dis debate it. And there was no protest in the media at that stage either. Now, let me come to 2002. If uh, this was the state of affairs in, 2000, in uh, 1984, the silver lining with 2002 is um, uh, systems had evolved since then. Judicial accountability had also evolved. There was no intervention whatsoever from the Delhi High Court or the Supreme Court in the context of 84, despite repeated efforts made by PUDR and um, others, um, PUCL and so on. They refused. Uh, I mean, there was a marked reluctance on the part of judges of that vintage to grapple with uh, politically motivated crimes. Uh, you did have uh, the beginnings of uh, uh, s uh, this judicial accountability by then, but that was limited to soft issues like liberating bonded labor, you know, intervening in some uh, environment related matters and so on. But they didn't have the courage at that stage to take on politically motivated crimes like uh, communal violence. But when it came to 2002, fortunately, as I said, uh, judicial, account uh, judicial uh, activism had evolved. And um, more importantly, we had an institution by then called uh, uh, NHRC, National Human Rights Commission, which was headed by a very uh, proactive uh, judge then called uh, Justice J.S. Verma. And uh, he took up this matter on a war footing. He went to uh, Gujarat. Uh, he made us survey of uh, various um, uh, riot affected areas, including um, Godra and uh, Ahmedabad and so on. And he came back and gave uh, a, a very forceful report about uh, how there was a complete breakdown of law and order, and how there was complicity on the part of uh, the past that be, and how there was need for um, you know greater vigilance on the part of systems and so on. Now. Uh, it was. It took uh, some more months. When um, I mean, in, uh, a year or so later, when um, 
uh, a very high profile case called the Best Bakery case had collapsed when uh, it had resulted in uh, acquittal of all the accused. It was at that stage that uh, the NHRC under Justice Anand, by then Justice Verma had retired, uh, just NHRC under Justice Anand had approached the Supreme Court, had filed a, uh, a, a specially petition in a very unusual move because normally if uh, the trial court had uh, acquitted, then in the normal course it would have gone to the uh, to the High Court for appeal. But bypassing the High Court, NHRC intervened in the matter and approached the Supreme Court directly. And then one thing led to another uh, that uh, finally it uh, resulted in uh, uh, you know, the Supreme Court uh, intervening in a forceful manner in 2008 when it uh, referred eight cases, uh, sorry, nine very major cases to uh, the uh, Special Investigation Team, referred to by uh, Vivian a while ago. And uh, before that, they had transferred uh, the Best Bakery case and uh, Bilkes Banu case. Uh, both of these cases were transferred to Maharashtra, where uh, you know justice was finally done uh, far away from Gujarat, far away from uh, people who were threatening these uh, witnesses. And then for further uh, uh, Proceedings in these nine cases I mentioned, in, which included uh, Godra, Gulberg Society, and Naroda Patia, which was the biggest uh, massacre in Go, uh, during Gujarat 2002. That was, in fact, the counterpart of uh, Trilokpuri. Trilokpuri was, saw the biggest massacre in 84. Naroda Patia saw the biggest in uh, Gujarat 2002.